All right, so we're going to assemble a Rapalos extruder uh, from the pieces that are provided in the file. Uh, you should have 3D printed everything that's in red here. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to take, you're basically going to start off by assembling the drivetrain. And what you'll do is take the 632 threaded rod and put a couple of nuts on the end of it. And you don't want to tighten the nuts completely together, you just want their faces to be parallel and for them to be a little bit loose from one another. And then you're going to take the big gear, the drive gear, and you're going to push both of those square nuts down into it and run the lead screw through a little bit. And then from there you're going to basically take the rubber band tensioner, which goes on the top of the, the rep extruder, and slide it down so it's in this orientation. It looks weird, but it ends up working later on, and you'll see. So once you've got this inserted, um, you're going to take the motor and attach it to the core unit, but the first thing is you have to put the little gear on the motor. Um, if you have a NEMA 17 stepper motor and it's got a nice uh, slotted face on the, the uh, center axle, this should be pretty easy to do. You just slide this down like that and it's locked in. Now, um, next we're going to attach this to the core of the rep extruder, and this is pretty easy. You basically just take the pieces and slide them together like this and they should either clip in place or just barely fit. And you want to take a couple of M3 bolts and slide them through and this is how you secure the rep extruder to the motor. Tighten those. What we're going to do is then take the top of the replica extruder and put it on. And this is really straightforward. You just attach it like this. Now you're going to need a couple of longer bolts to attach this top piece. So we've got these, I think they're M16 bolts. And they are just barely going to stick down all the way through. And they're meant to be a tight fit on purpose. So. So once you've got those through, you can secure them on the other side using a couple of small nuts. Now when you put this together, the system is going to be in a little bit of tension, and that's on purpose because that eliminates play in the uh, lead screw. So now we need to put on the bottom, but the bottom goes on actually. Uh, you can put it on now, but there's really no point to it. You're going to end up taking it off before you put the, the syringe in. So now the lead screw's in, and it should be able to spin freely. But the problem is there's still going to be a little bit of play in the lead screw, and the way we chose to eliminate that was just to take a standard office rubber band and basically push the lead screw down. So we had to put something on top of this lead screw and the way we did that was we put a couple of these square nuts on the tip and then we tightened them against one another. You could do this with pliers, you can do it by hand, it really doesn't take too much. And then we have this little piece which you should have printed and that goes on top of both of those. All right, And this kind of acts as a harness for the rubber band to stretch around and grab the the crossbow like piece here and keep everything in good tension. So now that you've got your rep extruder, um, let's go ahead, what you're going to do when you load it uh, is, well actually let's get, let's cut to the next part, we'll put this on the 3D printer. Okay so now we're going to attach the rep extruder that we put together onto this printer bought simple metal. We've taken the extruder off the simple metal. Um, it should be pretty simple for you to do that, <laughs> no pun intended, but anyway if you go online, there's instructions for how to put this thing together. Taking it apart is basically the reverse. So you should have already 3D printed this mount. Um, we printed it out of a rigid PLA. Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty ghetto, but it does the job. So uh, we're going to go ahead and attach that first to this and then attach the replica extruder to that. So the mount uh, was designed to work with PrinterBot Juniors and PrinterBot uh, Simple Metals. That's why it has this uh, hole layout here. So we're going to attach it to the simple metal and basically you just need three bolts to go down through these holes. And then you need nuts on the other side. You can use washers if you want to make the connection a little bit more secure. Um, I'm just going to basically take the hex key and 
tighten this guy with the nut on the other end. You can do this vice versa, it really doesn't matter. There's many different ways to put this together. And you don't have to use a specific type of nut. Uh, I'm using nuts that you find, uh, nuts and bolts that you find on common 3D printers, mostly M3 stuff. Alright, so the mount is secured to the printer bot simple metal, and we're going to take the REPL extruder and put it on it. This is really simple. Here's the REPL extruder, here are two holes. Basically what you're going to do is take two bolts and attach it like this. We'll get to that in the next video. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and attach the REPL extruder to the mount, and you got the two bolts here. Take the REPL extruder, put it up here, put the bolts down through, and uh, go ahead and tighten them in. You can tighten these really tight, and uh, this should work really well. So now we're going to take the 2.5 mm gas tight syringe and put it in the replicator. We're basically going to load the replicator. So imagine this is about a little bit under a milliliter of collagen solution. What you're going to do, the way it goes into the replicator, and this is kind of unique, but it's important for the operation of the device, is that you have to slide it in like this first. Okay, you can't just load it like that. You have to slide it in perpendicular to the axis of extrusion. You're going to slide it in, and then you're going to basically rotate it and push it up. It'll click in place. It's a very light click. Then you're going to take this holder that goes around the syringe and bring it up here. Now the holder has a couple of slots for nuts, and we're just going to put in a couple of M3 nuts. We're going to get a couple more bolts. Of course, from other pieces. All right, so place the holder for the syringe right there. Push the nuts down through the base of the REPL extruder. Uh, depending on how you know how your settings are when you print these pieces, the clearances might be a little bit tight. Uh, you should still be able to screw bolts through most of the holes. Uh, we kind of designed it so that it should work for most cases. Um, only if your settings are really bad are you going to have problems screwing things together. So once this is tightened, you can now run the lead screw down into the plunger of the syringe. And this may take a little bit, um, but keep in mind this is a this is supposed to be a very high performance syringe pump, so the clearances are very low, uh, and it's also all 3D printed, so you know, there might be some significant friction. So you should be able to screw this until it hits a stop in the plunger of the syringe. And when you hit that stop, that's when you're going to put the rubber band tension on it. Okay, so I've hit the stop now. Uh, you'll feel it, just in terms of resistance. So this is the rubber band tensioner, right? So I'm gonna put this on top of the lead screw, and I'm gonna take an average office rubber band, and I'm basically going to loop it twice. I mean, you can decide how much tension you want here. Put it between that little hook in the front, and then slide it around the two hooks in the back. Now what I should be able to do is turn this big gear and once I purge the nozzle of air here Oh, looks like we got a little bit of resistance. Ah, it was blocked, that's why. Yeah, now that it's unblocked, it should extrude beautifully. Okay, so that's all there is to it. Um, this is the REPL extruder and it's on a printer bot Simple Metal. Uh, as far as settings go, uh, see our other videos or tutorials for that. 
But yeah, this is a NEMA 17 stepper motor. It's directly compatible with the printer board, which is the motherboard of this 3D printer. Should work just the same as uh, any other stepper motor uh, that comes with these 3D printers. But yeah, that's all there is to it.